Thank you, guys. So I work at Microsoft in the AI, artificial intelligence, and research organization. Uh, I run uh, an algorithms team for 150-odd people, uh, machine learning scientists, game theorists, computer scientists, distributed computational scientists. Uh, and so it's an exciting group. Um, and when I was looking at my talk, I was thinking of, I could either tell you guys about AI, or I could tell you uh, about the future problems with AI. You already must be hearing about what Elon Musk is saying and so how to counter him. Um, or I could tell you how I got into AI. And given that I just had one kid going through the college app process, I thought that would probably be uh, the most interesting uh, talk to have here. So I titled my talk, Find What You Like to Do. And I underlined three words here. So the underlining is important because I know you, go, you, you girls and guys like the word like. So I don't want you to focus on like. I want you to start with you. So um, this is about you. It's your journey. It's not your parents' journey. And even though I nagged Anand to death, it's not my journey. It's his journey. Um, it's about what you want to do. And the do is about gainful employment. So you know, what, what can you gainfully do? So I don't want, when you think of doing, uh, I don't really want you to focus on binge watching Netflix as an example of do. Uh, the do is really, if you want to be a teacher, what does doing as a teacher means? It means preparing for class, knowing your subject, coming to class, seeing a, a, a sea of indifferent faces, and figuring out how to inspire that class. That is the doing. So um, you and do are very important. And today, I'll talk about find. So the you and do, really, where I want you to head towards is focus on the process and not the outcome. So I have a Hope Solo picture here. I really like that picture. She looks kind of aggressive and intense and muscular arms. And the process of getting there, actually, I don't enjoy that process at all. So Janvi knows that I barely go on my walks. So forget about running or lifting weights. So the process, you need to focus on, do you like the process, the doing? Uh, and I'm going to stop with that, because I'm going to start with the find piece. So I'm going to start with where I was uh, as a student. Um, in ninth and 10th grade, um, in my mind, I, I was very clearly going to do medicine. Around me, I, I grew up in India. And around me, I didn't see women doing many other interesting jobs, but I did see women doctors. Um, I was a healthy child, so usually the interaction with the doctor was kind of a happy interaction. I saw happy doctors. Uh, they wore this white thing, which kind of looked cool. Um, and then I also liked happy babies. So I put the two together, and I said, how about a pediatrician? And so from sixth, I kept telling myself, I'm going to do medicine. And my parents had this, you know, you know that approving look they have on that face, you know, when you say, I'm going to do medicine? That's the look they had. Like, I was their star child. <laughs> and I got to ninth grade, and I had my first physics, mechanics. I learned about gravity and F equal to MA and the pendulum swinging. And I wasn't particularly good at it, but it was fascinating. I also had a crush on trigonometry around ninth and 10th. So, so here I am. In my mind, I had already, I was a pediatrician. And I really liked physics and math. And uh, luckily for me, around the 12th, which is when we give our common entrance exams and we decide to do medicine, engineering, or whatever you decide to do, um, I was still doing bio. So I got into medical school. And my dad had that happy look on his face. And I had the look of, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and <laughs> we had a chat. And I said, Dad, I'm going to turn down this admission. And I'll tell you, he didn't talk to me for a year because I chose to do engineering, which was itself a blow. And then I chose to do civil engineering, which was even a bigger blow. Um, and I chose civil engineering because I just finished reading a book where this guy was an architect and he built all these homes. And I was fascinated. I said, I'm going to be an engineer, a real engineer. I got to college. and. Um, 
the first year, end of first year, we gave our exams. All engineering students give the same exam. And so you gave our, we gave our finals, and uh, in, a, in two months, our results came out, and I, had, I came first in that university. It's miraculous. So I'm looking at my grades, and I'm, I'm, I'm very thrilled. I'm very happy about this. I'm actually a very optimistic person about grades, and I never get the grades that I think I'm going to get. But in this case, it kind of had gone reversed. So I looked at my grades, and that year, the physics test was very hard. So I had... Uh, aced that test. I had an 81 out of 100, which was acing the test. The next highest was 50. And so basically, that one subject and my favorite math had put me above all the other students. I barely passed engineering drawing. And so the counselor, a college counselor, took me aside and said, hey, we're looking at your grades and the teachers, we had a discussion. The engineering drawing teacher really thinks you should not be doing civil engineering. You don't have any perspective. Um, and this he means by perspective. So here I am listening to him. He's, I'm heartbroken. And he says, we really think you should be doing computer engineering. And I'm like, that's not engineering, sitting in front of a computer. I, I had not even seen a computer. So I said, no way. I'm going to be a real engineer, you know, working with machines or um, so, so we kind of came to this middle ground uh, because the civil engineering teachers were rejecting me. I chose electrical, and I went to electrical engineering, and it was actually a good fit for me. I went through electrical engineering, kind of a happy kid. Um, I got to my final year, and there was a requirement to take a coding class. And so I took my first coding class in my final year of college. And that coding class required a thesis, a senior thesis. I believe you guys have a senior thesis, but it's completely different. This thesis was like an engineering thesis. And um, the, the professor in the computer class, he gave me this textbook, and he said, uh, do you want to work on this? And it was about speech recognition, getting a computer to recognize human speech the same way humans recognize human speech. And so I got the book. And as usual, like I'm going through this book, and it's fascinating. I had never thought computers could do that. I thought they just added things. And I really didn't like for loops and while loops. And this was completely different. And then there's this chapter on dynamic time warping, which is about dynamic programming. And it's ingenious. And I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, OK, I'm going to do this. I'm going to build this thing. Um, now, I don't have a computer. Did I tell you that? I don't have access to a computer. so. I look around, and everybody says, yeah, nobody has computers here. You know, you've got to be rich to have a computer. So um, someone gives, uh, says that they, at a company, they shut down at 7 PM. So they'll give me a computer from 8 PM to 2 AM. Now, this is India. So 8 PM to 2 AM, a girl is supposed to be at home with her family. So when I tell my dad, I'm going to be out sitting with a computer, he is not happy at all. He's kind of made you know, peace with this engineering thing. Now this computer thing is really throwing him off. He didn't talk to me for another six months. I found a boy who needed tutoring. He took me at 8 PM because I needed security. 8 PM, uh, I taught him until 10. And from 10 to 2, I coded. And I fell in love with AI. That was my introduction to AI. And at the end of it, I asked my professor, how do I study this subject? And he said, you have to go to the US. And so I gave my GRE with a month of preparation. And I applied to Caltech. And they were very kind. And within two months, they rejected me. So I knew where I stood. And so <laughs> I quickly applied to a lot of other schools. And BU gave me a full scholarship. I got two other scholarships. And I came to the US. I studied my master's. And I felt I hadn't learned enough. And I got a job after my master's, and I turned the job down. I did a PhD. So I was a student for a long time. Um, but I got into AI, or speech recognition. I did speech recognition for like six to seven years. And then I joined Yahoo, who hired me to do speech recognition for them. But they shut the project down the month after they hired me. So um, they said, you know, we are forming this machine learning group for online advertising. Uh, do you want to join it? So I said, sure, why not? And so I got into speech recognition as machine learning, but it wasn't called that. I got into machine learning. I got into online advertising. Uh, two years later, they 
had their first Hadoop cluster. They asked me, do you want to do distributed machine learning, distributed uh, computation? I didn't know Hadoop. I had never programmed in Java. But as usual, I jumped up very enthusiastically and said, yes, this sounds, again, in my mind, I always feel like, that is ingenious. And then I'm just caught. Uh, so I did distributed computing. Uh, and all those experiences essentially led me to where I am in machine learning and in Microsoft. Um, so my journey, as you can see, is a sequence of meandering. Um, I did a lot of different things. Um, and if you realize, um, many times I focused on the outcome before the process. And uh, luckily, the process kind of dragged me back to what I really like to do. Uh, but what I want you to take away from this is that right now, you should keep an open mind. Who you think you are, you're not really that yet. So you, you, you're going to evolve. You're going to change. And so you need to have an open mind about that. You have to follow your interests because it's the process, right? If you don't like exercising, you're not going to look like Hope Solo. So the process is important. Uh, and you need to get out of your comfort zone. So when someone gives you an opportunity to do something that is kind of related to your interest, you should not immediately say no. So those are the three things that I want you to take away from how I found myself into AI. I'm still studying. So when I, I didn't really learn AI the, in how, how AI is taught today. And so I'm behind. And just like Janvi and Anand have their books open, I have my books open. And oftentimes, I'll be on chapter seven, and I realize that I really didn't understand chapter three. So I'll be back on chapter three. And my husband says, you know, maybe after the two of my kids get into college, maybe I should go back to college. So I'm still learning. I'm learning reinforcement learning, which is machines teaching themselves. And I'm learning causal inference. This is a very interesting theory of uh, what if questions. Say, you know, we have all this data, but that data has biases of all the, you know, all the prejudice that already exists of how things were before. And so if you wanted to ask questions like, what if this was not how it was? How would you answer that question? So this is a fascinating field. Again, ingenious field. Um, and then from my perspective, I've been uh, in, in AI for now close to 25 years. So I have to give back. So I'm trying to give back through the women in uh, technology. We see women getting into STEM um, in college and even through their master's and PhD. But once they get into corporations, they are not sticking around um, enough. They seem to be moving fields. So how do you keep women in technology? So that's an area that I really want to contribute towards. And diversity of thought. So because I meandered, I came from civil to electrical to computer science, and I'm still not a computer scientist, I really think that if you create an environment which is safe for people to ask questions and safe for people to express opinions, that group kind of succeeds better than a group of you know, type A computer science. You know, a few may have excellent skills, but the group that has diversity of thought will eventually do better than the, the other group. So those are the two areas that I want to contribute. Hopefully, this was useful to uh, all of you. Um, I'll stick around for a little bit. So if you have more questions, come by and ask me. Thank you for having me.